Hey everyone, Mike Mulligan here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am a Certified Orientation and Mobility Specialist, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about and demonstrating 10 different cane tips that are available for somebody who is using a long white cane. So let's get to it. So before I get started here with my demonstration, I just wanna say that there are so many different choices out there for cane tips, but a lot of it really comes down to a person's preference, uh, what their environment is, how they use their cane, and there's so many factors involved in choosing the best or the right cane tip uh, to meet a person's need. So I recommend if you can, meeting with an orientation mobility specialist, maybe get a chance to try out some of these different cane tips uh, to see which ones would be the most beneficial for you, or if you're watching this for somebody you know, uh, most beneficial for them. But again, really these are just some of my thoughts and opinions on cane tips. I know people out there might have different thoughts on um, a lot of these different cane tips, but I just wanted to say that really it comes down to a person's preference and what type of cane tip uh, they like and choose. Uh, there's really no better one than the other. They all have just kind of different functions and different ways of working. So with that, we can get started with the demonstration. So the first cane tip I'm gonna talk about in this video is a pencil cane tip. So on my black desk here, I have a white pencil cane tip. And I'll do my best to describe it and tell you some of the features of this cane tip uh, before I get into an actual uh, real demonstration of this cane tip in action. So this cane tip is white. It is about the size and shape of my pinky finger. Um, I kind of like to describe it that way. Um, you know, it's called a pencil tip, but it doesn't come to a point like a pencil. It's more of a rounded uh, tip, and that's the part that comes in contact with the ground, which you'll see in a second. Um, so it's about the shape, size and shape of my pinky finger. Uh, this one is made out of nylon. They cost about $2.50 for a replacement or a new one. And another thing I want to mention is it is probably the lightest cane tip out there. I actually weighed all the cane tips I'm going to show you, and this one is eight grams. So it's a very light cane tip. Uh, this one has a little hook section here, and that's what hooks it into the cane. All the cane tips I'm going to be talking about today um, are hook style, so that's why there's that little hook there. Um, but that is just kind of the basics of what a pencil cane tip is like. All right, now for the pencil tip demonstration. So right now I have the pencil tip attached to my long white cane. I'm in my backyard actually on a long asphalt driveway. And I just want to talk a little bit about this cane tip. So this cane tip is primarily designed for use when doing the two point touch cane technique. So right now I'm walking, I'm just tapping my cane left and right. Um, and that's really what this cane tip excels in is using it when doing two point touch. If I try and do constant contact with this cane tip, oh, I just get stuck. Um, quite a bit and the cane comes back at me and tries to jab me and I find even with two-point touch uh, There's really the possibility of getting stuck this cane tip gets stuck quite easily um, Which causes the cane to come back and uh, I find many people don't don't enjoy that so uh, this can be a tough cane tip to use and Being in the field for almost eight years. I've only ever met one person who uses a pencil cane tip consistently and enjoys using it. Um, there's probably more out there that I'm just not aware of, but uh, this cane tip can be a little tough to use, um, especially for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience using a cane. So again, this is two-point touch. This cane tip is pretty light, so that helps if you have some wrist issues or you want a nice light cane tip. Um, but yeah, that's probably not the number one cane tip I would recommend to most of my clients. So the second cane tip I'm gonna talk about is a marshmallow cane tip. So again, here on my black desk, I have a white marshmallow cane tip. Uh, it's named pretty well. It's very much a uh, shape of a marshmallow, kind of looks like a marshmallow, white um, and kind of curves um, the way a marshmallow is. This one is made out of nylon. Uh, like the pencil tip, it costs about $2.50 for a replacement or for a new one. And this is a little bit heavier than the pencil tip, but still on the lighter side. Uh, for a cane tip and it's about 17 grams when I weighed it. So again, this one has a little hook to hook into the cane, um, but it's really pretty a basic uh, marshmallow white shape to it. Uh, it doesn't roll. There's one that rolls that I'll talk about in a little bit, but that's kind of the basics for what a marshmallow, it keeps rolling here on the desk from me, a marshmallow cane tip uh, is like. So now for the marshmallow cane tip demonstration. Again, I have the cane tip attached to my long white cane. I'm on the same asphalt driveway in my backyard like I used for the pencil tip. 
Um, and this cane tip is very similar to the pencil tip in that it's designed primarily for use with two-point touch. So again, here I'm tapping left and right doing two-point touch. Um, one of the benefit I find over with this cane tip over pencil cane tip is that it's a little more rounded, so it tends to get stuck a little bit less than the pencil tip, um, but it still gets stuck quite a bit. So for somebody who's a two-point touch traveler, uh, marshmallow tip might be a better option than the pencil tip in my opinion, but it really, again, depends on preference. Um, but it does help with getting stuck a little bit less um, in cracks um, in the sidewalk and on other obstacles causing the cane, uh, that would cause the cane to come back and try and jab somebody. So that's just a quick marshmallow cane tip demonstration. So now for the third cane tip, and that is a marshmallow roller cane tip. So very much like the one I just showed you, the regular marshmallow cane tip, this is also shaped very much like a marshmallow. Uh, this one is white and it has a hook like the marshmallow cane tip. But what makes this one a little bit different than the marshmallow, the regular marshmallow tip, is it rolls. So the top section here rolls left and right, and that's really helpful for doing constant contact. Um, that way it can be just kept on the surface and it rolls left and right without getting uh, as stuck and producing as much friction. So that's kind of the basics of how a marshmallow roller cane tip works. Uh, this is a little more expensive than the last two. This is about 10 bucks, depending on where you buy it. Um, there's a, actually a bearing inside that helps with the turning or the spinning of it left to right. Um, yeah, so that's really kind of the basics. And one last thing I want to mention again is the weight. And this is definitely heavier. It is about 39 grams. So adding that extra rolling feature um, adds some extra weight to the cane tip. And that's really, I think, a good overview of um, this cane tip. And one last thing to mention before getting into the demo is it's made of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. So that's kind of a mouthful. I'm not quite sure exactly what all that means, um, but it's definitely a different material than the pencil cane tip and the marshmallow cane tip that I mentioned before. All right, so now for the marshmallow roller cane tip demonstration. So again, I have that attached to my long white cane here. I'm on that same asphalt driveway in my backyard. And what I really like about this cane tip is that it can be used with both two point touch. So right now I'm just tapping left and right on my driveway as well as constant contact because it does roll. So being able to roll and do constant contact um, with this cane tip uh, is, uh, is definitely beneficial. Um, it can also be used for two point touch because it's not as big and heavy as some of the other cane tips, uh, making that still doable as well. Um, I really like this cane tip. It tends to be one of the most popular cane tips out there. Um, I give it out quite often. Uh, I see a lot of people also using it. Um, what's great about this cane tip is because it rolls uh, back and forth with constant contact, it doesn't get stuck uh, too often. It still gets stuck sometimes. Um, so overall, I find this to be a great overall um, all around cane tip can be used in kind of grassy situations. So there's a little some mossy grass here in the backyard here. Um, but it does a good job of rolling from the different terrains, being able to follow the different shorelines. So this is a great cane tip. Uh, it's really popular. And that's my short marshmallow roller cane tip demonstration. Now the fourth cane tip I'm gonna be talking about is a roller ball cane tip. So again, here on my black desk, I have a white roller ball cane tip. And this one is, um, similar to the marshmallow roller in that it has a bearing and rolls left and right so for doing constant contact but instead of the marshmallow shape to it there's actually a ball shape um, so like clementine size maybe a small apple um, that's about the size of the ball on here and then there's also still a hook to hook into a cane um, so that is kind of the basics of what a roller ball cane tip uh, looks like and one thing I want to mention about this, it's about $9 to get a replacement or a new one. And this one is made primarily out of nylon, so kind of like the marshmallow roller and, um, not, sorry, not the marshmallow roller, the marshmallow cane tip and the pencil tip. Uh, the roller ball is also made out of nylon. Again, this is kind of on the heavier side of cane tips. Um, it's one of the heaviest ones out there, and it's about 69 grams. So it's quite a difference from a pencil tip, which is uh, eight grams. So there's quite a big difference in the weight of cane tips, and that can make a difference in um, 
when using them. So I think that's just kind of a good overview of what a roller ball cane tip is. All right, so now for the roller ball cane tip demonstration. So again, I had that attached to my long white cane. I'm on that same asphalt driveway that I've been on um, for the previous uh, demonstrations. And this cane tip is primarily used for constant contact. That's really the main uh, cane, cane technique used with this cane tip. So right now I'm walking on the, the driveway, uh, sweeping the cane left and right. Um, one thing I really like about this cane tip, it does a good job of just rolling left and right. Um, it can get kind of gunked up with stuff eventually and might need to be replaced and, um, when it starts losing its ability to roll uh, left and right. So right now I'm still walking on that driveway sweeping left and right. One thing I find about this cane tip that a lot of people seem to like um, is it doesn't get stuck very often. Uh, it's probably the cane tip that gets stuck the least, uh, in my opinion, out of all the cane tips. And it does a good job of just rolling left and right. But if you're a two-point touch user, this really is not the best cane tip for that. Um, it's a little bit heavy and cumbersome to do that. So uh, that's the rollerball cane tip. Uh, I really like it. Um, I tend to give this one out quite a bit, especially to a lot of my older adult uh, clients who are maybe new to using a cane and are just hesitant. And I find that getting stuck in cracks can be a big deterrent for some of them to want or use a cane. So having a roller ball where it's just a little bit easier to use uh, can be really helpful. So again, just walking on the driveway here. Um, and it also does pretty decent on some like low level grass and things. If you're doing some real off-roading, <laughs> it might not be the best cane tip. It might be a little, little hard to use. But if you're, you know, if you're walking onto the grass here like I am now, um, this light kind of short grass, uh, and then back onto kind of the asphalt here. It's a pretty good cane tip in my opinion. So the fifth cane tip I want to show you is the jumbo roller cane tip. So this is similar to a marshmallow roller and it's a little hard to kind of describe this one. Uh, again, this one is white and it kind of looks like a marshmallow cane tip got flattened or squished. So now it's more of like a disc shape. That's probably about an I don't know, an inch, inch or two thick width. Um, but again, what makes this cane tip um, uh, unique is it does the rolling left and right for constant contact. Uh, it's pretty big. Um, it has that flat edge. It also has the hook like the other one. So that's kind of the shape of what a jumbo roller is. These cost about $11.50. Obviously, depends on where you buy it. Um, and this, again, is a, one of the heavier cane tips. This is about 71 grams. So it's... Um, Kind of a heavier cane tip um, and the demo will explain a little bit more how this works but pretty much a flattened marshmallow roller cane tip that moves and rolls left and right all right so now for the jumbo roller cane tip demonstration so again the cane tip is attached to my long white cane on that same asphalt driveway and this cane tip is designed primarily for use with constant contact. So right now I'm walking on my driveway, I'm sweeping the cane left and right. Uh, it's doing a pretty good job of just rolling back and forth. So I'm just walking along the asphalt driveway here. Um, so it, I find it does a pretty good job of doing constant contact. Um, it's a little bit heavy, uh, so that can be um, a downside or a con of this type of cane tip. But the jumbo roller right now, I'm starting to walk onto some grass. It still does a pretty good job on this light, um, kind of short, grass, there's some leaves on here, um, rolling back and forth between uh, the asphalt and this grass shoreline that I'm feeling right now with the cane. So that's kind of a nice little benefit. It kind of helps if you're going on some different types of terrain. Uh, again, it's a pretty, pretty good cane tip. I haven't seen many people use this regularly. Um, I do find with the shape, if you angle it wrong, it's kind of easy to get stuck on things. So you have to make sure it's at the right angle so that it doesn't get uh, stuck as often on different cracks and things on um, the sidewalk or, or things like that. So that's just a quick demonstration of the jumbo roller cane tip. So the sixth cane tip I'd like to talk about is called a Rover freewheeling cane tip. So I have one here on my desk. It's actually black, so it might be hard to tell with the contrast. Um, but I'm going to do my best to describe what this cane tip is. So it is a rubber soft wheel, um, probably about the, the size of like maybe a coaster. Um, I've heard these have also been used like kind of on RC uh, so remote control airplanes as they're like landing gear wheels. Um, it has like this plastic axle that connects to a hook that hooks up to the cane. And the way this works is it really rolls forward and back 
when using it as a way of going over rough terrain and the demo will talk a little bit more about that um, so it's black rubber rubber wheel um, about the size of a coaster uh, that connects to a cane um, using the hook style and these are about $13 um, and the weight on these is about 51 grams so a little bit lighter than some of the other cane tips uh, even though it kind of looks like a it'd be a heavier cane tip um, so that is the six cane tip all right, now for the Rover freewheeling cane tip demonstration. Uh, so this cane tip is again attached to my long white cane. I am again back on that asphalt driveway, but I'm gonna do some walking on the grass and things too here. Um, but this cane tip is really designed for people who have significant amount of usable vision and are looking to do some really some off-road uh, kind of hiking, uh, use with the cane uh, because the goal is really to detect large changes in terrain such as a big drop off or some big obstacles um, but it really doesn't do a great job of detecting little obstacles or little things that might be in the way so right now i am using it on the asphalt a little bit on the grass um, to be honest this is probably one of my least favorite cane tips it's pretty unruly it just waves uh, back and forth so even if you are using it just for obstacle detection, I feel like it's easy to miss something. Um, kind of just like a sidewinder, just goes left and right. Um, it's meant to be just rolled on the ground using constant contact. Um, so that is the Rover freewheeling cane tip. And that's just a short demonstration of how this works on both some cement, asphalt, as well as some grass and detecting some, some large obstacles here. So now for the seventh cane tip, I'm gonna be talking about the Dakota disc. So on my desk here, I have a white Dakota disc. Um, it is about the size of maybe a small plate. Another way to picture it is um, like a metal detector. When people use a metal detector, they has a circle at the bottom. Uh, some people say it looks like a metal detector. It is white. Um, it has kind of a flat side with a, like a no knob sticking out and that's where it hooks into the cane and then there's more of a rounded curve side and that's what uh, is in contact with the ground. And this cane tip is mainly designed for rough terrain, grass, snow, gravel, uh, things like that and not so much for concrete, asphalt, um, some of the hard surfaces that somebody would travel on. And this is about $10. I'm not quite sure the exact material it's made out of. It says durable plastic. What kind of plastic? I'm not sure. And then finally, it is about 66 grams for this cane tip. So that's about the basics of the Dakota disc cane tip. All right, so now for the Dakota disc cane tip demonstration. So right now I am still in my backyard, but this time I'm gonna be actually on the grass, not the asphalt driveway as much as I was before. And the reason for that is this cane tip is primarily designed to be used on these kind of off-road terrain. So going out for a hike on a dirt path, maybe some kind of thick grass um, in a backyard. Here I have some short grass uh, just coming off winter here, so it hasn't grown in yet. Um, but this cane tip is designed to be used uh, while doing constant contact. So right now I'm just walking on the grass, sweeping the cane left and right. And this cane tip does a great job of just gliding over um, some of this rough terrain. And that's really the benefit of this type of cane tip. Uh, it can miss some small obstacles because it could just glide over maybe a, a rock or something like that um, that's not that large. So there is that con to it. And another con of this cane tip is, is is that it's not designed to be used on hard surfaces like asphalt or concrete. Um, I guess you can, right now I'm kind of on the asphalt driveway. Uh, you can use it temporarily, but it does tear it up pretty quick, so I wouldn't recommend it. But again, here I'm on, kind of on this dirt area. Uh, it does a pretty good job of gliding over some of these sticks and leaves and other little obstacles that are here. Um, so this is the Dakota Disc cane tip demonstration. So the eighth cane tip I'd like to talk about is called a ceramic cane tip. So on my desk here, I have a ceramic cane tip. It's kind of like a half ball. It is made out of ceramic. And then there's this little black rubber kind of ring uh, just below where the ball part ends. Again, this has a little hook section to it. Um, and this cane tip provides some great auditory and tactile feedback uh, from the environment, which you'll see a little bit um, in a little bit in the demo here. It's about $16, so more on the higher end or more expensive cane tip to get. 
Um, but it is pretty light, so it is only about 17 grams. So that is kind of the basics, uh, it's rolling all around on me here, is um, kind of the basics of a ceramic cane tip. So now for the ceramic cane tip demonstration. So again, I have that attached to my long white cane, same asphalt driveway uh, in my backyard as before. And this one is kind of similar to both the pencil and the marshmallow cane tip in that it's primarily designed for two-point touch. Um, it can be used also for constant contact, I find, um, more probably so indoors. But again, this is primarily used for two-point touch. One benefit of this cane tip, I find, is that uh, it's kind of rounded shape helps with um, a little bit less of getting stuck in cracks and obstacles. Um, but it also has some good auditory feedback, unlike some of the other cane tips. Um, it provides some really good auditory feedback. So if somebody uh, really benefits from that auditory feedback in their environment, the use of a ceramic cane tip could be a good option. Um, so again, I'm just walking here on this asphalt driveway, tapping left and right. Might be a little hard to hear, it's kind of windy, but uh, it does make a little bit more sound than some of the other cane uh, tips and provides a little bit more auditory feedback. Um, about the environment, so tapping here on the asphalt, kind of tapping on the dirt, it's a little hard to hear, tapping on a rock. Um, so that's, I find, a good benefit of this cane tip. Uh, it provides some really great auditory feedback from the environment. So now for the ninth cane tip, I'd like to talk about the Metal Glide cane tip. So I have one here on my desk. This one's a little different because it actually has, is made out of metal. So there's some stainless steel metal here. It kind of looks like a thick uh, quarter at the end. Um, another way is a lot of kind of desks um, at schools and things have that little like metal foot to it. Uh, it's very similar to that. Um, it has the, that section, the metal stainless steel section, then it looks like a little plastic or rubber section, and then the white hook section. So the Metal Glide cane tip is relatively uh, cheap. It's about $4. Um, it does provide some good auditory feedback from the environment. And it's also on the lighter side, about 19 grams. So that's kind of the basics of the Metal Glide cane tip. So now for the Metal Glide cane tip demonstration. Uh, and this is pretty similar to the cane tips I've already talked about and I kind of add it into that same family. And it's really designed again, primarily for two point touch, especially outdoors. So again, I have it attached to the end of my cane here. I'm walking along that same asphalt driveway. Um, another benefit of this cane tip um, over maybe a, just a regular pencil marshmallow tip is that it provides some more auditory feedback, kind of like the ceramic cane tip. Um, Again, this one can get stuck quite a bit. I know some people really like it. Some people don't like it at all. Um, so it's really a preference thing. Um, but tapping, some good auditory feedback. Uh, you can do constant contact. I feel there's kind of some drag and it kind of gets stuck uh, quite a bit doing that. But you know, two point touch with the metal glide gives some good auditory feedback uh, from the environment. So that is a quick demo of the metal glide cane tip. So the 10th and final cane tip of this video is called an OmniSense cane tip. It's probably one of the hardest ones to describe out of all the cane tips, uh, but I'll do my best here. So I have it here on my desk. There are two main wheels, which are actually composed of two smaller wheels. And then they have these red rollers also um, on those gray bigger wheels. And the reasoning behind that is this cane is able to roll in all directions because it has the horizontal rolling and then also the vertical rolling. In the center there's a black section and it looks like a little shark fin and that's to help hold up the cane tip as well as the cane tip connected to a cane if you're kind of propping it up against a wall. Um, it's hook style and this is about $50 so this is definitely the most expensive cane tip uh, on the list and it's also the most he uh, the heaviest it is about 93 grams. So this is a pretty heavy cane tip. There's kind of a lot going on there, but I think the demonstration um, I'm about to show you will help a little bit explain uh, this cane tip and how it works and what, what the purpose of it is. So that's the basics of the OmniSense cane tip. And now for the OmniSense cane tip demonstration. So this cane tip is designed to really travel in a 360 degree motion. So again, I have the cane tip attached to my cane, I'm on my asphalt driveway in my backyard, and right now I'm just kind of doing some, some circles here with the cane tip. 
And this cane tip is really designed to be used uh, for constant contact. Um, however, I find trying to sweep it left and right is pretty challenging. It's kind of heavy and heavy, and it has quite a bit of friction on the ground. So um, being one of the heavier cane tips and that friction, um, it can get tiring pretty quick. Um, I also find it to be a little bit loud. But for somebody who has some good usable vision and they're looking for a cane tip that rolls forward, um, this can be a great option. It does a good job of just rolling over a crack. So there's kind of a crack here in my driveway, rolls over, um, does pretty good on just rolling straight, um, a little bit side to side on different terrains like this grass. Um, so this cane tip can be helpful in those situations, but I find if you're a cane user who needs to do full sweeping, constant contact, uh, this cane tip can be pretty challenging and difficult to use and probably wouldn't be my number one recommendation. Um, but if you're looking for something that just can roll in front of you to detect some of those large drop-offs or obstacles, uh, the OmniSense cane tip can be, can be a good option for that. So that's just my quick little demo here of the OmniSense cane tip. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this video was helpful in learning a little bit more about these different types of cane tips and what they're good at and what they're not good at. Uh, I just want to mention that the two that I probably give out the most are the Marshmallow Roller and the Rollerball Tip, and that's just my preference as an orientation mobility specialist, as well as uh, the clientele I normally work with is probably 55 plus, so um, having the rolling ones that they can use with constant contact uh, seems to be popular. But again, I just want to mention that, and thank you so much for joining me today. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you click that little bell icon, you'll be alerted when new videos are available. And have a wonderful day. Bye.